Hi everyone, it's Paola. So I'm back and today's video is how to become a graphic designer. <laughs> I'm a graphic design and art channel and I have not made a video called how to become a graphic designer. So obviously there were some issues. I worked it out. I'm making it now. <laughs> but yes, I am a graphic design channel. If you are not subscribed and you're watching this, please consider subscribing and also ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. Also follow me on Instagram. And I feel like that's all I have to say at the top of this video. So let's just get into how to actually become a graphic designer. Okay. So we're going to cover a few major things that you have to consider and have to actually begin to actually become a graphic designer. So the first one is you need to figure out what route you're going to take in becoming a designer. So this is kind of the decision of going to a university, having some sort of formal education, and being self-taught. I think there's pros and cons with each, and there's nothing really wrong with being self-taught if you're not going to school, and there's nothing wrong with going to school and taking your time to get started. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do. A formal education, I will say, is something that I encourage because I feel like it sets you apart when you're actually formally educated in the topic that you want to go into in your career, not just in art. Because um, art is one of those things, you know, that you can kind of do on your own or you can go get training in it. Uh, but I feel like just knowing what I do and, you know, I went to a university for graphic design and for art, for fine art, and it really helped me. And so I can speak from personal experience that I thought it was great. Um, I would say anybody can go to university, but you don't have to go to university to feel like you can become a graphic designer. Does that make sense? And I get this question a lot when I'm making videos, like, do you have to go to school to be a designer? And no, I don't think you have to. Of course, I encourage it just because from a personal standpoint, I think it's good. But also, being a self-taught designer doesn't necessarily mean you don't have these skills or can't learn these skills. You're just taking the initiative to do them on your own. So what I would say if you're trying to do the self-taught route is taking some sort of classes. They don't have to be at the university level. Maybe looking online, doing your own research. You really have to take the initiative to actually do it. And you know, you don't have someone just telling you what to do like in a classroom environment. So self-taught can be very beneficial too. You can learn so much and you can learn just as much as someone who went to school, but you just have to really commit to it to be able to do it. The thing about whether you go to a university or you know, you're just self-taught is that you have to be able to be set apart from the people who actually are amateur because you're a professional. So that's where you wanna get to, whether you go to a university or you just take the initiative on your own. You don't have to be an amateur even if you do it on your own. You can be professional, you can be a designer. So you just have to find those things that can set you apart and make you that level of professional. And you know, that's things like knowing licensing issues, having the research knowledge to find things for your designs and find things for clients. And you know, there's a lot of knowledge that goes, goes into it. And I actually found this Instagram post um, and I will tag the Instagram handle, I can't remember it right now, but I'll tag it. And they had a really cool post that was like, this is what you're paying for when you're paying for a graphic designer. And this is the kind of stuff that sets people apart from the amateurs to the professionals. It's just knowledge and experience. Now the next step, kind of, when you're figuring out how to be a designer is figuring out what you're good at. So. There's a lot that goes into design. There are a lot of different aspects. There are a lot of different specialties and you need to decide what you actually want to do. So this could be you want to be good at everything and like, listen, you can be like, you can try everything and kind of be a jack of all trades, um, which is good because, you know, it broadens your horizons on what types of jobs you can do, what type of clients you could get, whatever you're actually doing. Um, but then there's also a really good way to niche down and that's like focusing on one specific thing whether that be illustration ux design logos like that type of stuff so there's a lot of options for you which is a good thing in design because you're going into a field that has a lot of choices <laughs> like for me i have things that i love to do and i want to specialize in in a way but then i also do a lot of other things and i cover a lot of things because i'm a freelancer so i'm always trying to do what's best for my client um so i don't really like specialize in one thing like i'm not in just an illustrator or something like i'm not an illustrator at all but if that's something that you want to focus in in like 
d the design field, then go for it because that will help you find clients that are just looking for your specific skill set and you are the go-to person for that thing. So either niche down or try to work at everything and kind of be a well-rounded designer. Just make sure that nothing's really slacking in any of your skills. Make sure you know the things that you're good at and then you can leave the rest aside. So in a way you kind of are niching down either way, but niching down as in like you focus on one or two things that you're really good at and you kind of market yourself that way or you know you do a lot of stuff covering the graphic design umbrella but you know you know what you're good at and you know what your focus is and then you can sell yourself on those strengths so then the next step which i'm saying all of this is like in steps but i don't know you can figure all of this out before you get started or this is the way to get started <laughs> is figuring out what type of job you want so there are a few options when it comes to design. You don't have to work in one specific field as a designer. Again, I'm saying there's so many options for designers. It's such a great field to go into if you're considering it. I encourage it, but you know, there's always challenges, there's competition, stuff like that, but <laughs> I'm here to talk about the good stuff. So the different types of jobs are like small studio. So working at a small studio would be to work with a really small team. It's sort of more independent. It's sort of more creative and maybe a little looser um, and then there's working for like corporate positions so that's working for a bigger company or even a startup something in the tech field something that is not just design related it could be something where you are working in-house as a designer for that company you're not actually you know working for a small studio that maybe is a design studio that has clients and then you work with a design team to create things for those brands um, so those are kind of like two different options with getting a job and I think that they're really good options. I mean, those are like full-time positions, I would say. Um, and then there's also freelancing. So I'm a freelance designer and, you know, I also do YouTube as kind of my job, but freelance is a great avenue to go into, especially if you want to work part-time somewhere and then do freelance also or, you know, throw everything into freelance. I have a series, if you are not sure how to become a freelance designer, I have a whole series on being a freelancer. I break down everything, a little self promo, but link below to the playlist. But yes, these options kind of cover a lot of different things and there's a lot of different routes you can take. I mean, even if you're working for a bigger company, it might not be super rigid and corporate feeling, um, but also like corporate feeling could be really good if that's something that you want to look into. Like I've always wanted to have a job like that too. Like I've wanted to go in and, you know, have my little desk and have my office, have my design team that I work with. That would be awesome. Like there's so many options when it comes to finding a job as a designer. I mean, you could just be an illustrator specifically for some sort of brand and have so much work and it would be great. Like so many options out there. So look into, like I said, what you want to do, what you want to focus in. Maybe you want to focus on one thing and then become that for a company. Or maybe you want to cover a lot of different things and work with a design team that creates for other brands, creates user experience, creates logos, brand identity, all of that. It's a really exciting thing out there to get started in design. It can be scary, but hopefully this helped you a little bit in breaking down what it's actually going to be like to take the steps to become a designer. Um, if you want to know more about like how to find clients as a freelancer and all of that, like I said, my freelancing playlist is in the description and I hope that you liked this video in terms of like tips. I can't believe I never made it before. Um, <laughs> I'm a design channel and I'm not even telling you how to be a designer. What am I doing? <laughs> but I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a like and also leave in the comments below what other kind of stuff you want to know about becoming a designer and I will, you know, have a conversation with you in the comments. Also, please support me on Patreon. I have just revamped it. I've made new benefits and like updated. So definitely at least go check it out to see what the benefits are and see if you want to consider helping me out on this channel. Thank you to my patrons already for supporting me or helping me make content that's even better and better every time. And yeah, I will see you in my next video, guys. Bye. I feel like I was talking so fast during that video, but I had so much to say and I like had it all planned out and I was excited about it. You can tell I'm excited when I talk a million miles an hour. <laughs>